Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I'm starting this video at block five of my orchard and I almost never do that because um, for the last three years block five and me haven't been on speaking terms ever since I pruned um, ever since I pruned block five and that was it was about three years ago this year and if you wanted to see what block five looked like then you can find that on episode one of the macadamia show the very first episode of that show that i did <clears throat> and um i had been told and you know warned in advance that when you prune blocks of old hawaiian derived trees ones from macadamia integrifolia they'll sulk for three years before they crop for you again and then i heard from other people that's rubbish you know you'll get your crop back earlier than that well i'm here to tell you it's not rubbish <clears throat> because this block has been sulking ever since it got a haircut. Now it needed the haircut, it was long, long overdue and I bit the bullet and did it, but it hasn't given me crop. It's August now in 2023 and um, one of the only times you can see what your crop might be like on a macadamia orchard is flowering. And it's a little bit early for flowers to come out fully, but you can actually get out and around your trees and see what's happening. Now, this tree here, which I, on the latest information, uh, I'm told is a triple three, has got flower on it that, look, you couldn't ask for any better. It's got you know, green flowers, so they're not as visible as when they're fully out, and there'll be other videos I'll do when that happens, although one flower there, funnily enough, is fully out. But the tree is absolutely covered in flowers. Now, um, you don't let yourself get fooled by that because trees on the end of any row always have more flowers and, and often more nuts than trees down the row because they've got more exposure to sunlight, so they've got more ideal conditions. But as I move in the row as well and look at some of these other trees, there's, there's flower on and... Um, as far as block five is concerned, which has always been my worst block, this is the best um, I've ever seen. Um, I just wish the macadamia price was higher because it looks like there's going to be some crop on this year. Now, if, and I do believe these are macadamia triple three, their, their general mode of operation, this variety, is they bear lots of nuts. They're very low kernel recovery, but there's lots and lots and lots of them. And that's where the trade-off sort of justifies the variety a little bit, even though it's no longer widely grown. But yeah, you can just see there, there's some new flush growth and there's some new flowers. And you sort of scratch your head and wonder why, in a way, because I haven't really done much to this block. It got a big feed last spring and it hasn't really had a good feed since then but one thing I did do back in February was I put five tons a hectare of lime on all these blocks which had quite acidic soil and certainly one of my neighbours has commented he said look I think that lime you put on has done a world of good for your trees and changing the pH of the soil does free up some nutrients that are locked in the soil and I'm just wondering, looking at these trees, whether that's been the trick, um, because it's not like I've added a whole lot of nutrient. The soil tests came back okay, but but you, I would have, you know, ideally fed the trees generously in autumn to promote this very thing happening. And yet it is happening. So I'm very grateful this morning. That's um, block five, and, and um, I've just recently slashed all these old blocks um, to get the grass down and to keep it down, hopefully, this season. But I wonder, uh, and, and so I know that, you know, block three for all the old blocks are pretty much behaving the same way. Even the, um, even the um, three, four, fours at the top of the blocks. But I suppose, you know, to do a full health check, you've got to look at the other varieties on the farm uh, as well. So let's go have a look. Over at the base of block six, I've got some A16s. 
and um, immediately you can tell the difference between these and the triple threes that I just showed you. We've got a lot of very long, thin flower racemes. Now the A16s flower a bit later, so these flowers are in their earlier stages. But you know, up next to my hand, you can see how long some of the flowers are. And <clears throat> A16 always flowers heavily, so this isn't a, an especially good year. It, it looks, you know, pretty much average, but looking along all the row 16s around this uh, part of the block, I'd have to say I'm pretty happy with that. A bit further up block six, we've got some 660s, and they did a bit of out of season flowering in autumn, so you can see the odd nut there as well. But have a look at this, there's quite a lot of flower on these trees as well. So quite happy with that, and that's repeated fairly reliably across the board. There are, there are a lot of sick trees here when I took over the orchard four years ago, and with a bit of conventional feeding, they did come back. Now, further up at the top of block six, we've got some A4s, and these trees look hungry. They need a good feed. But even they've got a fair few racemes on. Um, not as many as the A16, I'd have to say, but there's some good basic flowers there and um, some late nut of course there that hasn't dropped as well classic A variety for you um, but yeah look we've got that mix of nut there and new racemes and the A4 the A4 will flower a bit late uh, kind of like the A16 will because those two varieties are actually siblings and one of the ways that's most obvious is in their flowering pattern. So that's all good. Here are some um, 344 flowers up the block of, up the top of block two. And um, yeah, look, it's not universal. That's a good example that I'm showing you now. But you know, walking along the row, there's definitely more flower on this year than last year. It's in its early stages, so we won't see it come out until late August, early September. But there's definitely some flower on here that there wasn't on last year. And now I'm back in block one. And block one has always done pretty well for me. And this one didn't get limed. So in a way it sort of disproves my theory that limer is responsible for everything or maybe the lime actually is responsible, I'm not sure. Uh, because the pH of this block, the soil acidity, has been good for a while. And that's that really, I think, has set apart this block from others on my orchard. Because uh, perhaps the nutrients have always been more available to these trees. And so once they started getting fed, they could use the benefit of that food. Now, most of these tree varieties, I don't know the name of. Uh, but there's some excellent flower happening there. Um, very heavy levels of flower for Hawaiian based trees. Um, normally they don't flower quite as heavily as this. Um, but yeah, very happy with what's going on here. And it's despite the mishmash of different varieties, there's flower on pretty much everywhere. But some of you will be wondering what my tree called stupid is doing now to recap stupid was a tree that had a full flowering in february and tried to put on a whole bunch of nuts so the question is is it going to try and do the same when it's meant to and here's the good news flowers everywhere at least as much as in february and we've got some fully developed nuts right these nuts were from out of season flowering in February 2023. For the most part, they haven't fallen yet. I don't know when they're gonna make up their mind to do that, but uh, full credit to Stupid. It knows finally when spring is and it's putting on flowers when it's meant to. And that's such good news because they'll be available to cross pollinate with the next tree here and 
as the bees visit the various trees and spread the pollen around in their messy little manner, um, you, you get bigger and better nuts from all that mixing around. So the question then becomes, um, look, you know, we've got all this flower on. It seems to be all over the orchard and, and it's all over other orchards I've looked at um, around the Northern Rivers this spring. Seems to be a good season for flowering. Not much rain forecast. So with any luck, we won't get really uh, unfortunate and have rain wash the pollen away off the flowers because these trees aren't really designed to be rained on in spring. So... Um, you know, we could speculate as to the causes of the flowering. Perhaps it was just an extended period of good wet weather leading into early autumn this year, and that made a good foundation for flowering in spring. But suppose these turn into nuts. Um, what then? Because the prices for our crop were so bad that I didn't even bother harvesting last season, and a lot of other farmers felt the same way. Well, there are some whisperings around of the macadamia price going back up. Um, and I think it's partly because some people like me didn't put their crop in and the macadamia processors who just assumed that we'd take whatever price was given to us have turned up short on their own supply contracts to you know retailers and other people who, who want macadamias, particularly at... Um, a lower price. Hello, this is interesting. Here's one of my 835s and it's got almost a commercial quantity of flower on that. Not not all over the place, still down towards the lower center of the tree. But um, that's an impressive performance for a, for a tree that hasn't been three years in the ground. And there's another example of it there. And uh, over here in my 788s, which have never flowered before. What have we got here? We've got flowers all over this thing. Never flowered before. This is the first time this has ever flowered. Anyway, that's a welcome distraction. But back to the price. Um, there are rumours that even this year, one or two processors have quietly put it out that they'll pay up to about $2.80 for any spare nut people have floating around because they've come up short from the price they've been offering. Now, I have found it very hard to get any information. I'm not sworn to secrecy, but the people I'm talking to have been. And it's a question of if you've got some spare nut, don't necessarily ship it to your processor for the price you've been offered. Might be worth making a call and saying, can you do any better? because there is some rumour that stocks are running low. And it's a, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it makes me smile because frankly, uh, the way the growers were treated this year was pretty terrible. Uh, not just the price, but all these inventive penalties um, they put on us. And to see a, a bit of a change in heart would be a good thing. Does it mean that a, a higher price will be offered next season? Well, that's something we need to do some more talking about. Uh, certainly if the old stocks have have worn down. Gosh, this 788's got a full flower on it already. There's a nice big fat raceme. So that's what that looks like. And the one next to it as well. Excellent. Really good. And here's the A4 over here that I've featured in a number of uh, other shows race seams everywhere let's go to look at treat in about a month's time so yeah look we think prices might bounce back a little bit although it still could be a little bit on the on the low side you wouldn't expect them to do a complete rubber band effect and, and go back up you know to four dollars plus a kilo but the news is that it might not stay low, which is, you know, which is what a lot of farmers have been fearing because the viability of their asset is something, you know, that's an equation of how long can you put up with these low prices before you might think about scrapping the idea of macadamia farming and doing something else. So obviously the quicker we have price recovery, um, the better it'll be 
for a lot of people who need to to live on these nuts here's a 246 it's again about three years old it's got some flowers on it although i've noticed out of my babies uh, the 246 has been reluctant to flower this one i think is a macadamia j i've got to check my records on that one but it's got some flower too so we hope now that you know in spring we're about to embark on um, a season of preparing nuts for harvest and farmers need to make that decision or look you know this flower looks good is it worth investing in um, the answer for me is yes provisionally it is definitely worth trying to do something to make sure there's a crop on your tree so that if the prices are good you can take advantage of it what do you do with that well the first step when you see flowers like this is to spray and you know for, for sydney slickers or, or you know pit street farmers or you know people who want to have a nice natural lifestyle i get it spraying is the ugly part of macadamia farming um, it's the most worrisome part of macadamia farming in terms of people's health and everything else um, but there are good products you can use uh, and bad products you can use and we're going to have some more discussion about that soon because um, my next episode is going to be an issue of the macadamia show so those of you who've been waiting for one uh, the wait will soon be over it's just got to be put together and it'll be an important demonstration of what you do this time of year to protect flowers just like these and um and a, and a discussion also of you know what it's good to use and not use particularly against the backdrop of the pricing that we have to face because sometimes doing the right thing costs more money than doing the the less right thing <laughs> Well, that's it for my video today, guys. I hope you enjoy the view. I certainly am. It's very early in the morning, and that's a special time of day to be out and about on your farm. I'll be in touch again very soon. Look forward to that macadamia show, won't you? And I will talk to you later.